Are you ready? From Lakeland Stadium, welcome to another sports presentation of Adams Cable High School Football, featuring a key matchup in the race for Division II of the Lackawanna Football Conference as the Lakeland Chiefs face the Riverside Vikings. Brought to you by Adams Cable Service, NJS Systems and Controls Route 6 Mayfield, Bestin's Body Shop and Collision Center, Tom's Floor Shop, Main Street Childs, Main Street Sunoco, by your Napa Auto Parts store, Tonkin Auto Supply. White's Crossing Sports Shop. Figlomini Drug Store, Carbondale. Locally owned and trusted since 1929. Nick's Excavating and Paving. Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Home and Cremation Services Incorporated. With locations at 74 North Main Street and 2 Hospital Street. The starting lineups for today's game are presented by Roselle Department Store, Carbondale. It's time for the big plays and hard-hitting action of Adams Cable High School football between Lakeland and Riverside. With a pregame show and the call of today's game, here's Nick Homick, Glenn Muskowski, and Steve Young. Yeah. Welcome to week nine of Adams Cable High School football and today we are at Lakeland for a game with playoff implications as the Riverside Vikings and the Lakeland Chiefs will battle here at Lakeland Stadium. With Glenn Muskowski and Nick Homick, I'm Steve Young. Glenn, here we are week nine. We're at Lakeland. Typical weather. It's windy. It's cold. And it's time for football. Well, Steve, I think this game, the wind is going to play a big part in this game for sure, uh, especially with the punts and the passes. Uh, but we have two teams that uh, model each other. They, they mirror each other completely. So I think they have great running games. So I think what's going to happen is whoever does the job defensively may come out on top tonight. Well, it's a big night of football here at Lakeland Stadium, and we will have the kickoff after this timeout on Adams Cable High School Football. Dremel, Dremel, Dremel. Hey, Dremel? No, I'm David. Can't find what you're looking for? Adams Cable Service has the perfect tool to find what you want, when you want. Just use your remote to access on demand. The on-screen menus make it easy to find thousands of favorite hit movies and shows you can play instantly. Adams Cable Service, it's all about you. What does it mean to be an expert? Does it mean getting the job done right? Or being able to pinpoint a problem and quickly find a solution? Whatever the meaning, the team in NJS are your experts in hydraulic and pneumatic components. So whether you need a custom hose built on the spot or a cylinder repaired from the ground up, the experts at NJS are there when you need them. And with the area's largest hose and fittings warehouse, NJS has thousands of the parts you need in stock and ready to go. NJS Route 6 Mayfield online at njsco.com. NJS is proud to call this area home and proud to sponsor our area athletes on Adams Cable Channel 7. We're here with uh, Coach John Fox, a Riverside High School coach. Both teams 5-3. and three. Uh, Major implications for playoffs in this game. You mirror each other pretty much offensively. But can you tell our audience a little bit about what you need to do defensively to give your team, the Vikes, a chance to win this game against Lakeland? Sure. Um, we just basically need to, to wrap up and tackle well and um, prevent them from third and short, keep them in long distance downs, and um, we also got to stay away from the penalties. And I think um, if we do that, you know, we'll, be, we'll put ourselves in pretty good Are there position. any key players that you feel you need to, to watch on Lakeland? Oh, sure. Um, you know, their, their whole backfield, they have four good running backs that they use. I think they're all over 500 yards, and um, that's their key. They're a downhill power game, and, you know, they're, they're going to hand the ball off the majority of the time, and we got to be able to stop it. It's, it's not as easy as it sounds, yeah, you know? Well, you know, well, with this wind up here, it's going to probably be mostly a running game anyway. Well, good luck to you, and uh, they a better team win tonight, I Thank guess. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. When your car does this... <laughs> Call us first. Every job is perfect or it doesn't leave the shop. That's the motto at Beston's Auto Body and Collision Center in Carbondale. In an accident, remember, it is your car and your choice to choose your repair center. Call Beston's Auto Body and Collision Center in Carbondale, well known for integrity, safety, and craftsmanship. 
For more information concerning your rights and the 10 things you need to know before having your car repaired, go to their website, bestinsautobody.com. Good luck to all area teams. From Tony, Mike, Jeff, and the staff at Bestins Auto Body and Collision Center, Gordon Avenue, Carbondale. You're ready for the big game, but how about your car? As you travel through downtown Carbondale, look for the classic yellow, blue, and red Sunoco sign. Drive in and fill up with the fuel of choice from Main Street Sunoco and get the finest performance from your car. At Main Street Sunoco in Carbondale, prompt courteous service is always assured. Congratulations to our local athletes and coaches for their hard work and dedication from the staff and management of Main Street Sunoco in Carbondale. We're here with Jeff Silchuk, head football coach of the Lakeland Chiefs. Coach, both teams five and three. Yeah. Uh, the very, some severe implications for playoffs in this game, and you both mirror each other offensively. One question for you. Who are the key player, or who's the key player or players that you need to be concerned with on, uh, to stop, uh, give your Lakeland Chiefs a chance to win this game tonight? Well, I can't say there's one. <laughs> uh, you know, there's, they're, they're good all around. Okay, uh, Riverside's good all around. Their linemen are very aggressive, very physical. Their running backs are quick. They run hard. They can throw the ball if they have to. We just have to play an all-around game and, and you know, mistake-free. And we just have to be very aggressive and we have to get off, get off the ball and do control it up front. Well, it looks like with this wind up here, if it does, if it keeps blowing like it is, uh, it's going to be a lot, a lot of running and very, very, very little passing. I would assume. Well, well we yeah, don't know that. You for never sure. know. You never know. <laughs> Oh yeah! Out of the out of the sack comes the, the place from Mr. Russell. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, good luck to you. Thank you. Thanks. Enjoy the feel of deep, rich luxury. Get the drama of radiant color and experience the timeless beauty, comfort, and durability of carpeting from Tom's Floor Shop in Childs. Tom's Floor Shop offers a large selection of hardwood, laminate. Vinyl, ceramic tile, and carpeting on display in their showroom. Rely on Tom's Floor Shop for expert installation. All roads lead to where great floors begin. At Tom's Floor Shop, exit 6 off the Casey Highway in Childs. Improve the appearance of your property with the help of Nick's Excavating and Paving of Carbondale. Nick's Excavating and Paving provides the highest quality service in residential and commercial excavating, paving and seal coating, demolition, land clearing, foundations, driveways, sidewalks and utility lines. Nick's Excavating and Paving also delivers sand, stone, topsoil and mulch. For prompt professional service, call Nick's Excavating and Paving Carbondale. Welcome back to Lakeland Stadium alongside Glenn Muskowski and Nick Homick. Steve Young with you for week number nine of Adams Cable Channel 7 High School Football. It's Lakeland and Riverside. And now, our national anthem.
And with our national anthem, it is time for the starting lineups presented today by the Roselle Department Store in Carbondale, where the smart new collection of fall and winter apparel is arriving daily. Roselle is school uniform headquarters for Lakeland, Carbondale area, LaSalle Academy, Holy Cross, Forest City, and Valley View, and they offer prompt, reliable laundry and dry cleaning services. If you're going to a formal affair or special occasion, let the experience of Sam Kalora at Roselle Department Store work for you with a perfectly tailored tuxedo by Sarno and Son. You can always depend on Roselle Department Store for unsurpassed quality, style, and value. Sam and the staff at Roselle Department Store are proud to present your starting lineups for today's game between the Riverside Vikings and the Lakeland Chiefs. The Lakeland Chiefs will be on the offensive attack and will run down their starting lineup for you. Nick Seta, the senior, is at tight end. Zach Polito at split end. He's a senior. Eddie Cavalier at left tackle. Junior, senior Antonio Sermonero at right tackle, Josh Wayman at left guard, Corey Bednash at right guard, Dylan Reeves is at center, Cody Roop quarterbacks the Lakeland offense, Eric Furco lines up at fullback, at tailback it's Mike Lowry alternating with Cy Babkinick. And at flanker, it will be either Tyler Bylotis, Luke Pettinato, Taryn Harding, or Garth Eastat. And your starting defense brought to you by Roselle Department Store for the Riverside Vikings. Philip Satil is at left end. He's a senior. Bill Nash at right end, a junior. At left tackle, Donnie Clark, a 6'2", 230-pound junior. Kyle Ludwikowski is at right tackle. Mason Hughes is the nose guard. The linebackers are Riley Gawhan and Paul Coleman. The left corner is Nick Satil. Keyshawn ja Kishad Stanton is at right corner. Matt Fallon at strong safety. And John Tucker at free safety. And teeing up the football for the Riverside Vikings, it will be... Nick Satil and three are deep for the Lakeland Chiefs. So here we go with week number nine of Adams Cable High School football. Great to have you on board here on Channel 7. Well, we'll be tested early here with this win, Steve. Well, if he gets that up in the jet stream, that could be this could be a touchback. And this end over and kick will bounce at the 25-yard line, and it's picked up there by the Lakeland Chiefs and uh Babkinick? Babkinick, yeah. That was Babkinick on the return, so Lakeland will get the football first. And Nick, I believe they will be going into the wind? Yeah, they're going to be going into the wind. He probably deferred to get the wind for the second half. And Riverside took the option to, to kick away. And the Lakeland Chiefs will start this drive from their own 36-yard line, first down and 10. And it will be Pettinato wide on the near side as Cody Roop will set them down with an eye formation in the backfield. And they go with a quick hitter up the gut of the Viking defense, but there was not too much there. That, Look at Eric Furco coming into this ball game, 49 attempts, 451 yards and six touchdowns. He is uh, sixth in Division II in rushing. So they've got uh, Furco at uh, number six in rushing in the division. Babkinick is fourth, and Lowry is fifth. And there's another wild card you can put in there, too, is uh, Garth Eastad. Also, this time they will go with the running game once again, and coming to the near side is Lowry. Strung out on the play, and some great defense by the Riverside Vikings as uh, Kyle Ludwikowski made the tackle, leading the pursuit for the Vikings. And I'll tell you, they strung that out really nice. The, the backs came up, the linebackers came up, and that was actually no play. Last, actually lost two yards. Third down and 11 for Lakeland from its own 35-yard line. And Dylan Reeves will lead Lakeland to the line of scrimmage. And it's Cody Roop to set them down. And Roop will drop back, and the rush is on, and Roop is sacked on the play. A big defensive play by the Riverside Vikings. And boy, what a what a dandy job by Donnie Clark coming up to make the tackle. There's nothing better than penetration. And they had a lot of it too. I'll tell you, Riverside's defense is big and athletic. And especially, I even, you really haven't seen their defensive backs have to uh, get involved yet, but they are some monsters out there. Well, Riverside leads Division Two. They only give up about uh, 12.6 points per game. Lakeland punts it away, and they get a good roll inside the 35-yard line. And the spot will be at the Riverside 32, and that's where the Vikings will bring their offensive unit onto the football field for the first time tonight. 
Offensively for Riverside, brought to you by Roselle Department Store, Matt Fallon at tight end, John Tucker at split end, Donnie Clark at left tackle, Riley Gauhan at right tackle, Mason Hughes at the left guard, Kyle Ludwikowski at right guard, Jake Polonis at center, Ken Keeler will quarterback the Viking offense, Paul Coleman lines up at fullback, and Mikel Green, who leads Division II in rushing, is at tailback. We'll run down the Lakeland defense for you in a moment. On first down, this is a handoff to the last man through, and he dances up to the 33-yard line. And that was Paul Coleman. Defensively for Lakeland, brought to you by Roselle Department Store, Josh Wayman at left end, Kevin Johnson at the right end, Corey Bednash at left tackle, Antonio Sermonero at right tackle. The linebackers are Cy Babkinick, Joe Pigeon, Eric Furco, and Rob Bomba. Taryn Harding at left corner, Garth Eastad at right corner, and Luke Petinato at free safety. Second down and eight after a two-yard gain on the last play. Riverside from its own 34-yard line. And Mikel Green gets the call, goes around left end, and he was looking for that first down marker. I don't know if he got it, Nick, well, and the flag is on the play. I'll tell you, he's a hard runner, though. He, he was just hit three times. He was hit three times and bounced off like a pinball every time. Well, he is the real deal. Coming into this ball game, 123 attempts, 1,045 yards, and 12 touchdowns. I think he had 300 yards last week and what five oh, touchdowns? He sure and did. And they got a personal foul at the end. On the end of that, against Lakeland, and this is going to give the Vikings excellent field position. This is not the way Jeff Wasilchak wanted things to go for the Lakeland Chiefs. So the Vikings in business now with a first down at the Lakeland 41-yard line. And Ken Keeler will come up under center. Paul Coleman will dot the I formation. And Green will take the handoff, and he's stuffed on the play. Kevin Johnson, number 80. Yeah, he, he was he, he, another, another great penetration move by Johnson. The thing of it is, though, and, and what I've noticed so far about Green is, you know, you better have a couple of guys on his uh, trying to get him down because he almost bounced out of that tackle of Johnson's. Well, he bounced out of two. And he, got carry, yeah, yeah. And, and he picked up 11 yards on, the, on, that, on that first run. You don't just get 300 yards by, you know, getting <laughs> By <lucky>. accident. <laughs> 8.45 to play, first quarter, scoreless here at Lakeland on the second down play, a little pass out to the far side of the field. And that was a good job by Nick Satil on the reception. And he'll be about a yard short of the first down near the 32-yard line. Well, Lakeland's defensive backs are playing way off. So that's, that's there all night until, they, uh, until their defensive backs start to come up a little bit. Yeah, yeah that was that. To make an adjustment there. That's as good as a running play, too. Third down and a yard to go from the 33-yard line, the Riverside Vikings, as Keeler will hand it off to Coleman, and Coleman breaks a tackle and then is spun down at the 21-yard line for a first down. So Riverside really doing a job firing off the ball on the line of scrimmage, and uh, their running backs are really, really hitting the open holes and doing some damage now against Lakeland. And they're mixing it up pretty well, Nick. And I'll tell you what else they're doing. They're in and out of that huddle quick. First down, Riverside. Green takes the handoff, and Green is buried on the play. You know, they're almost running a little version of a hurry-up offense. I'll Watch. tell you what, he got hit the line of scrimmage, Steve, but he picked got some up extra five, yards. Tough, five tough yards. They're probably right now, Glenn, if you did a little quick math, I guarantee they're over seven yards a play. Well. That's probably 11, their, that none, right there's probably their worst play. Here you go. 11 0 5 2 9. Yeah. Second down and five from the 17 yard line as Keeler will come up under center and Keeler will hand it off to Green. Green looking for running room, tries to turn the corner and then is tackled on the play. Lakeland strung it out and did a good job defensively that time to contain the 5'11, 185 pound senior. You know, Riverside's five and three. But, you know, when you look at some of their games that they lost, they outgained the team we saw last week in Old Forge. They outgained them. They just turned the ball over more. Well, they lost to West Scranton on opening night. And West seven to six. Slouch. Yeah, seven to six in week three against Myers. 27 to nothing to Old Forge. It is third down. Third down and five for the Vikings from the 17-yard line of Lakeland going for it all. And, oh, 
Ball was uh, overthrown yeah, and it was what. intended for John Tucker. Lakeland defender had to, had to, his, his eyes must have been as big as uh, saucers on that one. Well, now a fourth down play for Riverside, deep in Lakeland territory. And you talk about a quick moving first quarter of football, seven minutes and five seconds remain here in a scoreless first quarter. And from the 17 yard line, fourth down and five for the Vikings. Keeler will toss it to Green. Green coming to the near side, trying to get the corner. He's got it with a flag oh, down and he's in the end zone. That has to be a hole there, has to be a hole. Yeah, whoever set the edge uh, had a little hold of something. Yeah. You would assume. And the officials will talk things over down around the seven yard line as they will sort this out. And Holding, it's a hold. Yep, just a hold. Oh, that was a, that was a nice run by Green. Well executed play. And this uh, this will come back. There's the call. So now instead of a fourth and five, you're looking at fourth and fifteen. Yep. Yeah, well, you're going to have to contain Mikel Green if you're Lakeland. Well, he, I mean, two steps and he's in, and he's at the full motion. Fourth down and five from the 17 yard line. Oh, so they didn't really lose any yard job. Not really. Well, they, that was great on field. Then. Yeah. And Ken Keeler, the senior quarterback, third in Division Two in passing. Let's try the other and side. And they'll go time. with a toss sweep, and it's Green trying to get the corner. They'll do it the other way, and Green will. Well, did he step out of bounds? Yes, yeah, I believe he stepped out of bounds before he got the end zone. He did get the first down, though. So that is just an outstanding play by the Vikings, and now they will be knocking on the door. Do we have, uh, let's find out what's happening. Okay, no penalty on the play. And 13-yard uh, run. Football will be spotted at about the six-yard line. When you First have down and goal. When you have speed in high school, it kills. It, speed kills. It, it, and it's that way in any level, of course. But when it's in high school, it's it's a beautiful thing. He runs with speed and he runs hard. You, you Keeler keep, on a handoff. And they go to the fullback up the cool. middle. Not too much there. A short gain of about two on the play. So the uh, Vikings with a lot of options right now. They have a, 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 a terrific... Uh, Series going here, Nick. They're they're mixing it up quite a bit. They've they've got Lakeland on their heels, and they are coming right at them. They're not wasting any time. No, he's got a nice game plan to start this game. And Keeler will go on the pitch, and it's Green trying to find running room, and Green has popped inside the five yard line. He's caught at about the three. Now what they're doing though, they're running a lot of unbalanced lines. They're really overloading the one side that they're running to. So. Well, I'll tell you, Eric Furco made a nice stick on that play. And the officials will spot the football at about the two-yard line. And it will be third down and goal from the two for the Vikings of head coach John Fox in his second season. They have scored 201 points thus far. And now up to the line of scrimmage they come as Keeler will give it to Coleman. And oh, Coleman, Coleman is stacked up for no gain on the play. Guy on the bottom. Who, who was the man on the bottom of that? If you could pick that up, Nick. Ah, Furco again. Furco again. Furco again. But I'll tell you, if, you know, like you said, though, Glenn, Furco doesn't make that play unless he gets good penetration yep. on his front line. So it's fourth down and goal now for the Vikings of Riverside as we near five minutes to play first quarter, scoreless. You don't want to say play of a game right now this early in the game, of course, but this this is huge. This, yeah, this is for huge. For either team, yeah. whether sure. it's a score or whether it's a stop, it's huge. From the two-yard line, Ken Keeler will set them down. Here comes the snap. Keeler will give it to Coleman. Nope. Nope. No. Nope. I don't believe he got it. Nope. Nope. The Vikings were, thought he was in, but uh, Lakeland picked up one defensively. Picks up just one. Great defensive effort by uh, Lakeland. Well, you've got the by number the one. Nose. You've got the number one defense in Riverside and the number four defense in Lakeland. And Lakeland rises to the occasion, and they take over possession of the football on downs at their own one-yard line. So right now, uh, Nick, this is where you have to really be careful. Well, you have to you have to go play basic uh, power football here. You and it will be too. 
Rangers. It will be Cody Roop stepping up to the line of scrimmage for the Lakeland Chiefs. And it is uh, an eye in the backfield, and they'll just go with the ground game right up to the five-yard line to get some breathing room. And that was for Eric. Eric, Eric Furco, yep. six foot, 228 pound junior, getting the call. So for Lakeland, they are second in Division Two in rushing, as uh, or second in Division Two in total yards, and uh, they average about 33 points a ball game. And right now, with four minutes and 17 seconds left to play in a scoreless first quarter of football at Lakeland Stadium, they will face second down and seven yards to go. And they'll go with the running attack, and the Vikings are all over it. I think that might have been a mix-up in the backfield. Yeah, it wasn't pretty, the, that's for sure. Running back and the, and the quarterback almost collided. Yeah, that's not the – you don't want, want to do it any time, no, but want, not inside your own five. Right, you want a good mesh point, you know, with the exchange, but that didn't look like it was planned. <laughs> didn't look too fluid. No, I think you practiced it that way. <laughs> It is third down and seven with the football marked on the five-yard line. As Dylan Reeves will bring Lakeland to the line of scrimmage and Cody Roop will set them down. Roop will toss it and on the far side of the field, Lakeland looking for some running room and I think they'll got, they've got the first down. Got a flag back here at the three-yard line. That's coming back. It looked like Babkinick getting the yeah, call. Yeah, it was Babkinick, but I, that, that's, that flag is in the area of a hold. The luck, the good thing is until you have to distance the play. Well, so you're not going to yeah, lose yeah, much, yeah. if any. That was, that was a great run by Babkinick, but all for not. That will move the ball half the distance to the goal. And it will bring up third down and about eight for Lakeland. Three minutes, 20 seconds to play here at Lakeland Stadium in the first quarter. Scoreless between the Vikings and the Chiefs as Lakeland will talk things over in the huddle. Tyler by Lotus will bring in the play from the near sideline and head coach Jeff Wasilchak in his eighth year with a career record of 153 wins and 72 losses. On third down, Lakeland will hand it off to the tailback, and he is stuffed. A great defensive effort by the Riverside Vikings. And, you know, that's just a play to, to get your punter, a, a, you know, an opportunity here to bail you out a little bit. But you got to go cover this punt. And for the Chiefs, Garth Eastad is on to punt the football. Two are deep for the Riverside Vikings. Eastack gets a good punt away. Will bounce at the 36-yard line, and on the return, Kashad Stanton oh, trying to that. turn the corner, and he's belted, and another flag well, on they're the play. Call a face mask, but they should have called a clip right there on the, on the yeah, guy who set the first wall. Yeah. Wow. And the officials will talk things over. If Hank Stream were still alive, he'd be asking how all six of you miss a call like that. <laughs> <laughs> I could see him strutting back and forth well. on the sideline <laughs> with the with the uh, charts rolled up in his hand, right? Back in the day, that Jeff will tell you that they, when his dad coached back in the 60s and 70s at Lakeland, they right. had the Blazers just like Hank Stram did with the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, I remember them. Yeah, yeah. I remember. They, well, that's how they emulated their uniforms after I tell you, they missed the they missed the block in the back. That's though. what I mean. They I'll, missed I'll that. That was obvious. <laughs> so now Riverside will have excellent field position at the Lakeland 19-yard line. First down and 10 with two minutes and 19 seconds to play in a scoreless first quarter. Well, Riverside has had field position, and now, now well, do we have a timeout? No, yeah, the official had official. to get set on the near side. Now the clock will start as Ken Keeler will come up under center to run the Viking offense. Keeler will give it to Green, and Green spins inside the 15-yard line. A reminder, next week we will be at the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex in Varden for week 10 of high school football, the season finale. 
And it will be the Lakeland Chiefs and the Western Wayne Wildcats. We'll have all of the action with the pregame show for you at 645 right here on Adams Cable High School Football. Second down and five for the Vikings from the Lakeland 13. As Keeler will have an eye formation in the backfield, Green will get the call. And this time, Green is buried on the play. No, uh, Josh Wayman led the way defensively. Again, penetration by the, the left side of the defensive line that for Lakeland uh, results in a two-yard loss. Third down for the Riverside Vikings. Nick Satil will be a wideout on the top of your screen, along with John Tucker. As Keeler will run the offense, and Green will get the call, looking for blocking, cut down on the play. Joe Pigeon made the tackle for the Lakeland defense. So here we go again, guys. Fourth down for the Vikings with under one minute remaining in a quick moving first quarter of football. If Lakeland stops them though, the momentum has to, has to switch to their side even though the field position is not good. Scoreless with 35 seconds to play. Fourth down and five from about the 13 yard line of Lakeland. Here's Keeler and the flags come out. Well, Riverside yeah. has shot themselves in the foot oh, twice yeah. down, down in have. Lakeland territory. So those mistakes will be addressed. Well, we'll talk about this in the fourth quarter if it uh, if it's a close game. If, you know what we always talk about, guys? Opportunities, and do you take advantage of them? Yeah. So it's fourth down and long for the Vikings with the penalty. Fourth and ten. And we'll see if the Vikings will get this playoff as the clock is now stopped with 24 seconds remaining and the timeout is called by Lakeland. We are scoreless with 24 seconds left. We'll come right back with more Adams Cable High School football after this timeout. You're ready for the big game, but how about your car? As you travel through downtown Carbondale, look for the classic yellow, blue, and red Sunoco sign. Drive in and fill up with the fuel of choice from Main Street Sunoco and get the finest performance from your car. At Main Street Sunoco in Carbondale, prompt courteous service is always assured. Congratulations to our local athletes and coaches for their hard work and dedication from the staff and management of Main Street Sunoco in Carbondale. Now, back to more action with Nick Glenn and Steve on Adams Cable High School Football. Timeout was called by Lakeland with 24 seconds to play here in the first, and we are scoreless. Fourth down and 10 for the Vikings from the Lakeland 18-yard line. So here we go with another fourth down play. Keeler rolling out near side, looks, fires, oh. and the pass is incomplete. And Riverside turns it over on downs once again to Lakeland. Well, I will say this. If Lake, that ball was intercepted, there that may have gone. been uh, an 80-yard return. He read it. It was a tip ball, but Harding broke on the ball very nicely. You know, that, that looks like a mismatch right now. Harding's not exactly the tallest uh, corner out there, and so Teal is a big receiver. So look for that uh, maybe perhaps later on in the game. As Lakeland with 19 seconds to play in the first quarter will take over possession of the football and operate from their own 19 yard line. And up to the line of scrimmage they come. And here's Cody Roop to set them down and Roop will go on a toss sweep coming to the near side. And that is Lowry getting the call and he dances up across the 15 yard line. And that will be the final play of quarter number one here at Lakeland Stadium. In week nine of Adams Cable High School football, we are scoreless, and we're coming right back with more action after this timeout. Looking for great prices and special offers on top quality parts and accessories? You'll find them at Napa Auto Parts. Visit Tonkin Auto Supply in Carbondale for great savings while supplies last. Only at Napa. Stop in and see Glenn, Garth, and the staff at Tonkin Auto Supply in Carbondale. Your know-how folks. Napa know-how. Napa know-how. Napa know-how. Napa know-how. 
The White's Crossing Sports Shop, Canaan Street in Carbondale, is the leading authority for the outdoors in northeastern Pennsylvania. They carry a full line of archery accessories, hunting and reloading supplies, live bait, and a variety of fishing tackle. The White's Crossing Sports Shop is open seven days a week from 7 a.m. until 1 p.m. Call 282-4699 or log on to their website at whitescrossing.com. Finding that unique seasonal outdoor item has never been easier with help from Tom and the staff at the White's Crossing Sports Shop. Back to the gridiron for more Adams Cable High School football. As we kick off quarter number two at Lakeland Stadium, it is scoreless between the Vikings and the Chiefs. Lakeland with the football facing second down and 10 from their own 18 yard line. So, Nick Riverside had two shots at the end zone. They turned it over on downs twice, and now it's uh, Lakeland on the offensive attack against the league-leading Riverside Viking defense. And it is Lakeland going with the running attack, and they will just go off left tackle for a short gain on the play. Mike Lowry getting the call. He has scored a total of 36 points this season and has scored six TDs. So they have a number of players who can run the football. Furco, Babkinick, Lowry, Eastat. It's only a matter yeah. of time. I think Lakeland's got something up their sleeve. <laughs> I, they always have a little, not, I wouldn't call it a gimmick play or a trick play, but they always have a little new little wrinkle you, they pull off for these kind of games. They're down and seven for the Chiefs from their own 21-yard line. As Roop. We'll hand it off to the tailback, and there goes Lowry for a first down across the 30-yard line. That's a straight-ahead bread-and-butter yep. runner. That, nothing fancy. That was a good. That was a good run, a power run. Well, that and that's time, their first first down. Well, that time uh, Lakeland did a good job on the uh, line of scrimmage, opening up some running room for Lowry and the Chiefs will sustain the drive with the first down from their own 32 yard line with one minute gone by in the second quarter. And Roop handing it off once again. Lowry breaking tackles and he's decked at the 37 yard line. That's where the forward progress will be marked. So Nick, we have a real headbanger here in week nine between the Vikings and the Chiefs. I like that term. I, I tell you what, we are knocking heads so far. I'll tell you what. But yeah, they, they, both teams are running very hard, and, and the defense, defense is playing very, very tough. Oh, absolutely. Both defenses are rising to the occasion when they need them. Here's Lakeland going to work on the second down play. A little oh, misdirection. Needed a and a block. Roop looked to turn it upfield, lost his footing, and then is down at the 40. And the tackle by Jake Polonis. I think uh, Roop might have had the first down if he didn't lose his footing, guys. Uh, well, that, that plus uh, uh, the, the guard uh, missed, missed the, the defensive end there. He got a little, he, 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 he stopped. He just got, enough, he just got yeah, enough of yeah. a chip on him yeah. to, to get him positive yards. They're down and a long yard to go for Lakeland with the football marked at the Chief 41-yard line. Well, 9.45 to play here in the first half, and we are scoreless. We talk about it all the time, changing the field position battle in these tight kind of games. Oh, yeah. Roop with a split backfield, and Roop will spin and hand it off, and this is Furco getting the first down for Lakeland. Well, nothing fancy, just some good old-fashioned power running by Lakeland right now. And they will keep this going at the 46-yard line. He just run that little bit of a belly type of a fullback belly. He's finding a soft spot in the, in the defense and just gains, you know, well, they, three, they're, they're they're hitting the they're hitting the line of scrimmage quickly. You know, they're they're quick hitters there, and and they're and and they're they're getting a, a little bit of speed going up the field. <laughs> I have a great text for Nick Holman. Uh, <laughs> somebody's got a this word is a of good, advice this, is, this has got to be from Coach Gabriel. <laughs> I am going to read this to you. <laughs> this somebody's out there listening to us, yes, I guess. Yes, yes. Listen to this. Get the message to Homick. I'm in my warm bed listening to your broadcast while he is freezing upstairs. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it was a lot colder at Carbondale the past two weeks than it is up here. That's because the wind is not—it's not doing anything right now. 
Tell it like it is. You're freezing, right, well, Nick? Well, Coach Gary, I'm glad you're nice and comfy with your hot cup of cocoa. He's got to get up on the bright and early tomorrow and make that bus ride to Susquehanna. <laughs> That's a good one. The Sabres will be waiting for you there, Coach. He won't sleep tonight. No, nah, he won't. He'll be watching film. He don't, I, don't think he, the guy, I don't think the man sleeps. He doesn't. He could be in the nice warm bed and cozy, but he probably has <laughs> us on listening to our broadcast while he's watching footage of Susquehanna. <laughs> Well, let's let's put it this way. He, he's not rushing too too much to get up here to have any conversation with the next. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, let's see if he makes yeah, an appearance here. Fumble. In the oh. Lakeland. Let's check this. Riverside has the football. Lakeland turns it over at the Viking 40. Ooh, baby. Boy, the Lakeland Chiefs had a drive going, an impressive drive, and they turn it over. Our first turnover of the night. Let's see if Rivers I can cash in on it. Now with 8-12 to play in a scoreless first half of football here at Lakeland, the Vikings will take over first down and 10 at their own 39-yard line. Now we saw Riverside turn over the football twice to Lakeland on downs, and now the Chiefs fumble it away, and the Vikings with their offense on the field set to go as Ken Keeler will take a look at the Lakeland defense and he will hand it off to Green and Green tries to go off right tackle across the 40 for about a one yard gain on the play. He looked like he, when he cut he slipped a little bit but he, he got, tell you what he ran right into the back end of his, of his blocker. I'll tell you for week nine this field is in pretty good shape. It is, you know, considering all of the rain we had in the middle rain. of the week. They played a lot of soccer on this. They had a soccer weeks. game here this afternoon at I four o'clock. Yeah, I mean, and with all the rain we got, it, it's in really good shape. This field always drained well, but you look at other fields around the area that still have the natural grass surfaces, and there it is, beat. Yeah, that Carbondale's beat. That's it. Just. It, Second down and eight, Riverside from its own 41. Paul Coleman getting the call, and Coleman is caught at midfield, and he's very close to a first down, and I believe he has it. Uh, Coleman is, is, is not too shabby with, with, with the speed either. Well, he came out of nowhere. He's 5'10", 190 pounds, and a junior, and got good blocking by the right side of his offensive line to give the Vikings a first down. And as we near seven minutes remaining in a scoreless first half of football, the Vikings are on the move, first down from midfield. And here's Keeler, and he will hand it off. That looks like Green and that's, Green. I think that's Coleman. Coleman? That's, uh, what with a flag on the play. That was, that, was a late, that was a late flag. Yeah, that was thrown by the umpire. That's, he's pointing to Riverside, so yep. I don't know if... Well, the officials will talk things over. That's near a late flag, so that must 46. be a hold, a hold. Maybe they're going to mark it from there. Here's the call. Personal foul. Against the Vikings. I, I mean, we've had, what, three personal fouls so far in this game? I really haven't really seen anything... Really blatant or out of the ordinary. Unless well, it's it must be. Stuff. It must be. You know, it, it must be that stuff <laughs> in the bottom of that pile. Yeah. You, you know. Uh, you know that stuff that nobody yeah. sees and everybody and everybody hears about. <laughs> I think I saw something on a long time ago on on the Sports Channel. It was called the bottom of the pile. And was it? Was it a good program? <laughs> it was. It was. It was good. I wish I had a copy of it. Second down and 21 for Riverside off the play fake. Keeler. Passes and he gets up across his receiver gets up across midfield. It's a good solid play. Though. Yeah, that's a that's a what? Pretty much seven, got back seven, everything they lost. Seventeen yards. Yeah. yeah, they're right back across midfield at the Lakeland 48. Yeah, guys who are on defense, Nick, uh, in that program called the bottom of the pile, they would talk about, you know. <laughs> Everything that goes on, you know, get grabbed, yeah. How they uh, how they 
you know, prepare for a game. You know, you don't brush your teeth for a week. Things like that. It was, it was crazy. I think that's the least of some of those guys' worries. <laughs> Third down and eight from the 48-yard line of Lakeland. And it is Keeler airing it out on the far side of the field, and the pass is complete to Tucker near the 12-yard line of Lakeland. Along the far sideline, and Tucker made a great catch. And now Riverside will be knocking on the door. I was waiting for a play like that. I thought it might have been so teal, but Tucker, exact same thing. Yeah, let's check the official yard. spot. It's going to be inside the 10. 38-yard completion. Spot will be at the nine-yard line. Big play by the Riverside Vikings. We're scoreless with 547 to play in the first half, and the Vikings will hand it off to Green, and Green tries to go around the right end and then was caught on the play after a short game. Now, as you can hear, Babkinick in on the tackle for Lakeland. Boy, we might have a record first half here, guys. Uh, it's it's, it's got to be quarter to eight in this first half. It's gotta seven, be 7.35, and we have 5.21 and counting on the clock. Time remaining in the first half. When you execute and keep the ball on the ground, the game moves. What time does that baseball game start? We might, be able, we might be able to catch the fourth inning of that baby as uh, Keeler looks to pass near side. Pass is complete at about the two-yard line, and it's a, it's a touchdown. Nick Sotil. That Nick should be Sotil. a flag. Nick Sotil on the receiving end, and it's a touchdown, and Riverside has a 6-0 advantage over Lakeland. It's a catch. Touchdown, Riverside by Nick Sotil. Well, how about that? It was a great Great catch and a great effort to get in the end zone. It looked as though, Nick, he was out of bounds, but evidently his forward progress did break the point of the goal line at the pylon. Yeah, I think he got the ball over uh, the pylon. And Satil with seven extra points out of the hold of Cody Glukowski. And, and the point after is good. And the Vikings take a 7-0 lead over Lakeland with 5.01 to play in the first half here on Adams Cable High School Football. Here's great news from Figlamini Drugstore in Carbondale that can save you money and make shopping for your prescriptions more convenient. Figlamini now has an 895 generic drug plan and free local delivery. Figlamini offers diabetic shoes, lift chairs, and home health supplies. That's what sets Figlamini apart from the chains. Locally owned and trusted since 1929. Stop in and see the difference for yourself at Figlamini Drugstore in Carbondale, where your you're not just a number, your family. Improve the appearance of your property with the help of Nick's Excavating and Paving of Carbondale. Nick's Excavating and Paving provides the highest quality service in residential and commercial excavating, paving and seal coating, demolition, land clearing, foundations, driveways, sidewalks and utility lines. Nick's Excavating and Paving also delivers sand, stone, topsoil and mulch. For prompt professional service, call Nick's Excavating and Paving Carbondale. The action continues from the 50-yard line with Nick, Glenn, and Steve on Channel 7 High School Football. Here's the kickoff by Nick Satil of Riverside, and it will be caught by an up-back from Lakeland, and that is Eastad, and he takes the football across the Lakeland 35 out to the 37-yard line, and that's where Lakeland will bring its offensive unit onto the field, trailing in the contest by the score of 7-0. Well... They have pretty good field position, and, and there's about, almost five minutes left. There's plenty of time for Lakeland to do something here. They had a nice drive going. It's a shame that they had to fumble the ball because they really changed the – if they had to punt that away, they really would have changed the field position. Lakeland will go to work from its own 37, first down and 10, as Roop will go off the play fake, slips, fires pass downfield, and it's incomplete. No, there's yeah, the flag. There's the it flag. was a late flag, two, two flags. Yeah, well, now the other guy's got to get any action. Yeah. Zach Polito <laughs> was the intended receiver. He was held. He was mugged. He was... <laughs> and back at the field here. We got pass back interference. Back. I, I would... And we got laundry all over the field. So, four... The Lakeland Chiefs, they will end up with great field position after the officials talk things over near the 47 of the Chiefs. 
Well, regardless, it's going to be a first down nonetheless. So. No doubt about that. And uh, field a little bit slippery, Nick, as you saw Roop when he went to plant and fire that football, slipped a little bit. Yeah, it And now the football will be marked at the Viking 48-yard line where the Chiefs will be in business first down and 10, trailing 7-0 with 4.49 to play in the first half. I think that's Gross in a quarterback. It is it, it now. Is. Gross is in there at quarterback, and he will hand it off to Babkinick, and the sophomore lowers his shoulder and plows inside the 40-yard line. Like Glenn said, though, there's plenty of time, yeah. and with the late Lakeland's able to score, you know, when the they get on down, spurts, yeah. they, just, they just seem to pile them on. I mean, they, they had a stat in the paper today. In their four victories, there's, uh, in four of their victories, they've averaged 46 points in those victories. Jake Gross will spin and hand it off to the first man through Eric Furco, and Furco oh, lost it. the football. It's was, did down. the whistle blow? Yeah, yeah, the whistle blew. Down, yeah. Boy, that was close. A very similar play, though, when he fumbled the first time. And with the football at the 33-yard line, second down and, well, let's check this spot. Closer five. at the 32-yard line, second yes. down. Second down and about five for the Chiefs. And Jake Gross will take the snap. And the quarterback will hand it off. Here comes Babkinick with the, some shifty moves. And then he's dropped near the 25-yard line. But that is good for a Chief first down. You know, like, like Michael Green, Mikhail Green, he... Babkinick is a very violent runner. What I mean by that, though, he dishes out as much punishment as he takes. He's 5'11", 172 pounds, and a sophomore. And when he gets the football, he's dancing around and lowers his shoulder and not afraid to take a hit and picks up a big first down for Lakeland. First down and 10 for the Chiefs on the move from the Viking 25-yard line. And Gross on a toss play coming near side, and they'll keep it on the ground once again. For about a one-yard gain on the play, and that was Babkinick getting the call. 7-0 Riverside with uh, three minutes and ten seconds remaining in the first half here at Lakeland Stadium. Great to have you on board here on Adams Cable High School football. Getting colder by the minute. Checking in with the play from the near sideline is Garth Eastat. And Eastat will line up as flanker on the near side as Gross will survey the Viking defense. And Furco will take the handoff, and there he goes up the gut of the Viking defense, and he's cut down at the 10-yard line. That play is probably as old as Lakeland football itself. T trap play up the, the middle. Trap, the gut trap. They've been running that forever. Yeah. And it still pays dividends. <laughs> still, <laughs> well, still tell you, that play and, the, and that inside handoff to the to the white uh, the flanker coming across. First Great down place. goal, Lakeland from the 10 yard line of Riverside. Gross will give it to Furco again, and Furco dishing out some punishment goes inside the Viking five yard line. Now that was that was Bab. Uh, let me see, Babkinek, I what? think. I can't see the number yet, but was looks it? like yeah, Babkinek. Okay, yeah. Babkinek. Yeah. Well, now inside the five at the four-yard line, second down for Lakeland. And looked like Babkinick got the call on that one, and he was stopped as he went across the line of scrimmage. Well, it's imperative Lakeland puts points on the board here. Yeah, they need this with they a buck 50 this. on the clock. They need this, one touchdown, but you're giving the ball away in the second half. Mm -hmm. Seven nothing Riverside. Third down and goal from the two yard line for the Chiefs. And it will be Babkinick as at tailback. Furco will line up as the fullback as Gross will step to the line of scrimmage. Gross will take the snap. He hands it off to Babkinick, and Babkinick goes into the end zone for a two yard touchdown. And the Chiefs now trail well, by one. Well, after giving up that score, that was an impressive drive by the Chiefs, with, without question. Well, we have a good old fashioned football game. A slobber knocker, as they say. Yeah. Gotta love it. 
Now, is this Cooper on for uh, Lakeland, guys? Yeah, I believe it is, yes. Colin Cooper with 24 extra points on the season out of the hold of Nick Pirano. Oh, that one, he kicked, he kicked, he kicked, kicked that, that one out with the guy chat pulling the uh, band stuff over. I yeah, think he, he almost hit the, uh, <laughs> hit the ambulance That might have been in the old dance hall in Chapman Lake. Hey. <laughs> We're tied at seven, Lakeland and Riverside on Adams Cable High School Football. The Gabriel family and the staff at Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Home and Cremation Services Incorporated of Carbondale send best wishes to our local athletes and teams for a successful season. In your time of need, call 282-1219 for the ultimate in professional service from Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Home and Cremation Services Incorporated, 74 North Main Street and 2 Hospital Street, Carbondale. Dremel, Dremel, Dremel. Hey, Dremel? No, I'm David. Can't find what you're looking for? Adams Cable Service has the perfect tool to find what you want, when you want. Just use your remote to access on demand. The on-screen menus make it easy to find thousands of favorite hit movies and shows you can play instantly. Adams Cable Service, it's all about you. Welcome back to Lakeland Stadium with Glenn Muskowski and Nick Homick. Steve Young here as we are tied. 7-7, Lakeland and Riverside. The Chiefs now tee it up and they will kick off to the Riverside Vikings. And boy, this is a oh. dandy kick that's going to go into the end zone for a touchback. That's that was up in the jet stream. That's a coach's best friend right there. <laughs> wow, that was a beauty. And the football will come out to the 20-yard line where Riverside will have it first down and 10 with 123 to play in the first half. Now the Vikings now will talk things over. This Riverside offense is averaging 25 points a game and 268 total yards. And when they get going, they could do some damage. As Keeler will step up under center, and Keeler will hand it off, and the Vikings elect to run up the middle, and Furco makes the tackle for the Lakeland like, Chiefs. Like that was green. Yeah, I believe that might have been Coleman, but we will. Let's. Will we have a timeout? No, we're going to. Uh, I, clock is going to keep running. I think Riverside's pretty content to go into the locker room here. You know, if they pop one or two, maybe you'll see them get a little hurry up and call some timeouts. But. And on second down and eight, with under one minute remaining in the first half. The Vikings will go to work, and the pitch will go to Green, coming to the near side of the field, and he is dropped at the 28-yard line. Eastat came up to make the tackle. Verrett Lakeland very fortunate on that play. Their sideline was going nuts because they had two receivers out wide, and one of the defenders did not come out to get on him. So a defensive words, breakdown, and they dodge a bullet. They were really outmanned on this side, so. Clock is running as we are down to 19 seconds to play in the first half. And looks like uh, the Vikings, Nick, will be pretty content just to, uh, they're not going to even run another play. And the final 10 seconds will tick away. And that will bring us to halftime here at Lakeland Stadium. We're deadlocked. The Chiefs and the Vikings tied at seven as both teams will head to the locker room for the halftime session. Well, Nick, good first half of football, kind of what we expected between what, these two teams. What I expected, a little lower scoring than I expected, but I'll tell you what, offensively, it's, this is the kind of game we thought it was going to be. Yeah, well, you have, uh, you have some good defenses out there tonight. Last year, it was the Riverside Vikings knocking off Lakeland by the score of 7-6. to six. So here tonight, teams are tied at 7 as we go to the halftime break. We will... Enjoy the feel of deep, rich luxury. Get the drama of radiant color and experience the timeless beauty, comfort, and durability of carpeting from Tom's Floor Shop and Childs. Tom's Floor Shop offers a large selection of hardwood, laminate, vinyl, ceramic tile, and carpeting on display in their showroom. Rely on Tom's Floor Shop for expert installation. All roads lead to where great floors begin at Tom's Floor Shop. Exit 6 off the Casey Highway in Childs. What does it mean to be an expert? 
Does it mean getting the job done right? Or being able to pinpoint a problem and quickly find a solution? Whatever the meaning, the team in NJS are your experts in hydraulic and pneumatic components. So whether you need a custom hose built on the spot or a cylinder repaired from the ground up, the experts at NJS are there when you need them. And with the area's largest hose and fittings warehouse, NJS has thousands of the parts you need in stock and ready to go. NJS Route 6 Mayfield, online at NJSCO.com. NJS is proud to call this area home and proud to sponsor our area athletes on Adams Cable Channel 7. Dremel, Dremel, Dremel. Hey, Dremel? No, I'm David. Can't find what you're looking for? Adams Cable Service has the perfect tool to find what you want, when you want. Just use your remote to access on demand. The on-screen menus make it easy to find thousands of favorite hit movies and shows you can play instantly. Adams Cable Service, it's all about you. Improve the appearance of your property with the help of Nix Excavating and Paving of Carbondale. Nix Excavating and Paving provides the highest quality service in residential and commercial excavating, paving and seal coating, demolition, land clearing, foundations, driveways, sidewalks and utility lines. Nix Excavating and Paving also delivers sand, stone, topsoil and mulch. For prompt professional service, call Nix Excavating and Paving Carbondale. When your car does this. Call us first. Every job is perfect or it doesn't leave the shop. That's the motto at Beston's Auto Body and Collision Center in Carbondale. In an accident, remember, it is your car and your choice to choose your repair center. Call Beston's Auto Body and Collision Center in Carbondale, well known for integrity, safety, and craftsmanship. For more information concerning your rights and the 10 things you need to know before having your car repaired, go to their website, bestinsautobody.com. Good luck to all area teams. From Tony, Mike, Jeff, and the staff at Bestins Auto Body and Collision Center, Gordon Avenue, Carbondale. You're ready for the big game, but how about your car? As you travel through downtown Carbondale, look for the classic yellow, blue, and red Sunoco sign. Drive in and fill up with the fuel of choice from Main Street Sunoco and get the finest performance from your car. At Main Street Sunoco in Carbondale, prompt courteous service is always assured. Congratulations to our local athletes and coaches for their hard work and dedication from the staff and management of Main Street Sunoco in Carbondale. Here's great news from Figlamini Drugstore in Carbondale that can save you money and make shopping for your prescriptions more convenient. Figlamini now has an 895 generic drug plan and free local delivery. Figlamini offers diabetic shoes, lift chairs, and home health supplies. That's what sets Figlamini apart from the chains. Locally owned and trusted since 1929. Stop in and see the difference for yourself at Figlamini Drugstore in Carbondale, where you you're not just a number, you're family. The Gabriel family and the staff at Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Home and Cremation Services Incorporated of Carbondale send best wishes to our local athletes and teams for a successful season. In your time of need, call 282-1219 for the ultimate in professional service. From Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Home and Cremation Services Incorporated, 74 North Main Street and 2 Hospital Street, Carbondale. Seven. Here in week nine of Adams Cable High School football. Here come the Chiefs to uh, tee up the football and kick off. That they're this, Lakeland's kicking with the wind again. So if if uh, Cooper, is that Cooper? No, I don't believe no, no, Cooper's good. kicking off this, no. this time. 13? Right? Yeah, that is Cooper. Colin Cooper. If he, if, he, if he can get his foot into the one he, like he got in the first half, that thing this thing will go in the end zone again. There's a stiff wind still blowing that way. So, But Riverside will have the wind in the fourth quarter. And the six foot one, 165 pound senior will tee up the football and kick off to the Riverside Vikings, two are deep. 
And here we go with the third quarter of play from Lakeland Stadium. And Cooper's kick, this high spinner, will be caught at about the 13-yard line. And on the return, Nick Satil, and he is up across the 30-yard line. And Satil, with a good return, gives Riverside pretty good field position at its own 33-yard line, first down and 10. And the Riverside Vikings, coached by John Fox. Overall, as we mentioned, five wins and three losses. They are undefeated at this moment in Division II with a 3-0 mark. And they'll talk things over in the huddle. As Jake Polonis will lead Riverside to the line of scrimmage. And Satil and Tucker are wideouts on the near side on first down and 10 from the Viking 33-yard line. And here's the pitch. A sweep coming to the near side of the field. Green goes nowhere. I'll tell you what, again, the, the, the speed of Lakeland's uh, defense has really str stringing these, uh, these runs uh, wide, and they're coming up and uh, really giving some big help from the backfield. Kevin you know, Johnson, Nick, with some good containment defensively. He's been, he's been in a lot of big plays tonight. But I'll tell you one thing. When, you know, the one unsung thing you hear about is like the kid, you know, the kids who run that scout team offense so they can get a good look as far as what, you know, my, Michael Green might be like. Having a stable of backs like Lakeland has, I think it really helps that. Second and 11 from the 32 off the play fake. Keeler rolling out, passes on the far side of the field, and the pass is complete. Now Paul Coleman on the reception for the Riverside, incomplete. Okay, let's check that. Pass was intended for Coleman. And the incompletion will stop the clock for, for one of the few times tonight. Yeah. With 11 minutes and six seconds remaining third quarter. Third down and 11, the Vikings. And Riverside up to the line of scrimmage. And Keeler will survey the Lakeland defense. On third and long from their own 32. Keeler off the fake again, rolling right, running, looking, yeah, lots of green state. in front of him. He's got the first down and then slips at midfield and hits the deck. Boy, Keeler, pretty good runner as he turned the corner on the far side of the field, took the Lakeland defense by surprise. And uh, let's check the spot, guys. He, the official yards. mark is going to be at the 49-yard line. Football just shy of midfield. That's such a dangerous play in football. It when is. You, when you split those three wides out, or two wides, and you can just run, have that run pass option. New set of downs for the Vikings from their own 49. Keeler will give it to the first man through. And Coleman. Look like Coleman as he uh, struggles. Let's check it. No, nope. new man in the lineup for the Riverside Vikings. And uh, Matthew Fallon. He is a senior at six foot and 180 pounds. He took it right up the gut of the Lakeland defense for about a uh, three yard gain. It will result in second and seven for the Vikings. And here come the Vikings, and it will be Satil wide on the bottom of your screen on the second down play and Keeler will hand it off and Green looking to make the cut and boy Lakeland all over it. Three red shirts from Lakeland and Corey Bednash led the way. I tell you, they are keying all, all over Green. He just hasn't had an opportunity really since the first quarter to get any kind of space. No. And right now on third down and seven from the Lakeland 47, a big play for the Riverside Vikings. As Keeler will come up under center with 9.45 to play. We're tied at seven here at Lakeland Stadium. Keeler to throw out, swings it out, a little swing pass far side of the field. They'll be short of the first down. Whoever came flying up the field for Lakeland, if you just look back at the quarterback, he would have had an easy pick. Easy pick. Well, right now, guys, a big call right here for Riverside and head coach John Fox. It is fourth down and a couple of yards to go as the official will spot the football at the Lakeland 43. Fourth and two. And they'll roll the dice. I'm a bit surprised. Well, when you have a good offense, guys, you, you put your confidence in them. 
Keeler hands it off. Last man oh, through. Yeah. It looked like Coleman, and he's got the first down. Yeah. There was no doubt about that as he squirts to the 38-yard line. Yeah, that was a good power move. No doubt about it as Paul Coleman. He went right over the top of the center that time. And uh, he, he, he was, I'll tell you what, he, he almost broke that. New set of downs for the Vikings. First down and 10 from the Lakeland 38 as they are on the move with 845 remaining in the third. And Keeler will come up under center. And Keeler will hand it off. Coleman gets the call once again, was hit initially at the line of scrimmage. Second effort takes him to the 35. Paul Coleman is a good running back, Nick. Yeah, he's a nice runner. Very uh, Kind of low false. center of gravity exactly. and tough to bring down. Forward. And he hits the hole nice. Yep. Second down and about seven for Riverside with the football just shy of the Lakeland 35-yard line. You're just tuning in. We are tied at seven as we near eight minutes to play third quarter. And Keeler with an eye formation in the backfield. The fullback slipped, and the handoff will go to Green, and the Chiefs hold a team meeting on it. Wow. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five Lakeland defenders if, if, all over Green. If he got one, that was a real tough one. That's a tough way to make a living if you're a tailback. Well, that was, I think, you know, part and partial to the, the fullback stumbling. Yeah. yeah, he didn't get the block. That's what happened, so... The the play broke off. down. The yeah, quarterback had to actually give a little, uh, a little bit of a different uh, handoff. Well, yeah, everything gets all uh, messed up. The, the, the timing. Timing, yeah, timing is huge. Yeah, sure. Timing is everything. Third down and seven from the 35 of Lakeland. And Keeler off the fake fires downfield. A pass. Let's check Fallon. it. Is it incomplete? That's, yep. That's yep. Fallon on the reception. Matt Fallon. Six foot, 180 pound senior with a big catch to sustain the drive for the Vikings. And the first down at the 26 yard line. Now, right now, the Riverside Vikings very methodically moving downfield in a 7 7 deadlock as we have exactly seven minutes remaining in the third. And Keeler will take the snap. He'll hand it off to Coleman, and Coleman belting on the play. He, is that Coleman or is that Green that they moved in the forward? No, it's Coleman. No, it's Coleman. Coleman. For a minute there, it looked like 22. Well, they seem like they're moving. Uh, they look like seem like they're moving Coleman, Coleman from uh, fullback to running back on occasion. It's a big uh, series right here for Lakeland. As Riverside is using up a lot of time off of this third quarter clock. Football is uh, spotted at the Lakeland 25 yard line. Second down and nine yards to go for the Vikings. And it's Keeler to call out the signals and the pitch will go to Green trying to turn the corner. Almost broke a tackle and uh, Green was caught after a short gain on the play. Bad kick, really just made a heck of a play there yeah. from his outside backer position. Well, yeah. that's like a, 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 the motion goes left and then they give that ball to Green to go on, on the back side. That's about the second or third time he almost broke one. Yeah, well, right could, here, it's uh, going to be Lakeland. They're going to have to come up with a big defensive stand because right now the Vikings are getting some momentum on third down and five from the Lakeland 21 yard line. Keeler to throw he's once open. again, he's looking open. end zone. He's got a man open. It's complete to John Tucker for a 21 yard touchdown. And the Riverside Vikings to take a 13 to seven lead over Lakeland with five and a half minutes to play third quarter. That's what the play action pass does for you. By running the ball those times, he's gonna be open with those. And how about the pass from Keeler? I mean, oh, he put that money. pass right on the money. Well, he was right open, right off the right off the line of scrimmage. It was a it was a perfect perfect thrown perfectly thrown pass, and uh, uh, no no question he had the receiver a defender beat. Nick Satil on for the extra point and a flat and a whistle on the play. Let's find out what's happening on this on the uh, extra point attempt as the officials will check it out. Here we go, Nick. Nice procedure yeah, against the Vikings. So that will set them back. 
You know, 5.30 to play, 13 to 7, the Vikings. Pushing them back, so it's going to push them back to... Yeah. Will the Vikings go? Try the extra points, though. I'm no. surprised. They're going to go for. They're going to try for the two-point conversion. I'm very surprised at this one. Now, we'll do, you know, we've seen crazy things over the years in high school football. But no, I know what they're going to do. But uh, I just saw it because I saw next to the running out the wildcat watching see coach. You know, here comes Riverside up to the line of scrimmage. It will be Dave Coolbaugh. No quarterback. Look like the wildcat. Yep, there it is. As Satil. And now we have another whistle, and there's a timeout call by Lakeland with 5.30 to play in the third. The Vikings lead at 13 to 7 on Adams Cable High School Football. You're ready for the big game, but how about your car? As you travel through downtown Carbondale, look for the classic yellow, blue, and red Sunoco sign. Drive in and fill up with the fuel of choice from Main Street Sunoco and get the finest performance from your car. At Main Street Sunoco in Carbondale, prompt courteous service is always assured. Congratulations to our local athletes and coaches for their hard work and dedication from the staff and management of Main Street Sunoco in Carbondale. The action continues from the 50-yard line with Nick, Glenn, and Steve on Channel 7 High School Football. After the timeout, both teams back out on the field, and here come the Riverside Vikings as they will try for the two-point conversion. And it will be Satil to work out of the gun. Here well, comes the snap. I wouldn't be surprised if this is a pass. And Satil will look in zone, yeah. and he was belted on the play as soon as he <laughs> unloaded the football, and I believe that was Kevin Johnson who made the hit. So the two-point conversion, no good, and with five and a half minutes to play in the third, it is Riverside 13, Lakeland 7 on Adams Cable High School Football. The White's Crossing Sports Shop, Canaan Street in Carbondale, is the leading authority for the outdoors in northeastern Pennsylvania. They carry a full line of archery accessories, hunting and reloading supplies, live bait, and a variety of fishing tackle. The White's Crossing Sports Shop is open seven days a week from 7 a.m. until 1 p.m. Call 282-4699 or log on to their website at whitescrossing.com. Finding that unique seasonal outdoor item has never been easier with help from Tom and the staff at the White's Crossing Sports Shop. Looking for great prices and special offers on top quality parts and accessories? You'll find them at Napa Auto Parts. Visit Talkin' Auto Supply in Carbondale for great savings while supplies last. Only at Napa. Stop in and see Glenn, Garth, and the staff at Talkin' Auto Supply in Carbondale. Your know-how folks. Napa know-how. Napa know-how. Napa know-how. Napa know-how. Get the Napa know-how from Glenn, Garth, and the staff at Tonkin Auto Supply in Carbondale. 13 to 7, Riverside, your leader. With five and a half minutes to play, third quarter, the Vikings tee up the football, and they will kick off to Lakeland. And here is your kick by Nick Satil. And no. it's an onside kick. It did not go. Did, did it go, go 10, 10 yards? yards? It, 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 uh, well, did it go 10 yards? no way. No. No. I don't, well. No. Now the officials are There's right no on way. top of things. It did not look like it uh, went 10 yards. It, it look where the officials are standing. Yeah. It, it, didn't, it didn't go 10 yards, but did a Lakeland player touch? You, know, you have to be impressed with the play calling yeah. here tonight by uh, John Fox of Riverside. Yeah. No, uh, yeah. Riverside touches first. Lakeland's yep. football, so Lakeland will get great field position. Well, I'll tell you I what. I like the call. I love the call. That's a great I, call. I, I, I thought it was a terrific call. <laughs> uh, nobody expected it, and, 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 and Lakeland couldn't, well. Hey, you just missed a two-point conversion, right? 13 to 7, so what do you do? The element of surprise. Well, sure, the game is know? hanging in the balance. Sure. From midfield, Lakeland goes on the offensive attack. 
And it is a handoff by Cody Roop, and the running play just gets back to the line of scrimmage as yep, Babkinick had nowhere to go. One thing we've realized tonight, the three times Riverside has kicked off, they want no part of Lakeland's kickoff return. No. Because Lakeland has scored a number of uh, special teams touchdowns uh, this year, especially on kick returns. But that comes down to good coaching and good scouting. Yeah, that's what, there's nothing that says they have to kick to them. So no. <laughs> that's a perfect know. call. To tell you the truth, I don't know why anybody does, right? right? Really? Why, why would you kick it to someone who's so dangerous? As the Lakeland Chiefs give it to Cy Babkinick, and uh, he is cut down as he tried to go off right tackle. Short gain on the play, and good defense by the Riverside Vikings. Philip Satil, the left defensive end, making the tackle. And with the score 13 to 7, and Lakeland in Riverside territory at the 48, they will look down the barrel of third down and long yardage. Nick, down and could this be your your surprise? A good time for it. Well, he's coming out of a different formation here. Zach Polito is a wide out on the top of your screen. Here comes the rush, and Roop was under the gun and belted, forced to unload under pressure. Well, he had he had no no chance at that. that now Philip Satil, the blitz was on, and uh, Roop had to get rid of that football quickly, and now it's fourth down and long. And the punting team will come on for the Chiefs. Yeah, so far the surprises have been by the team in white. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, that that was a pretty good defensive stand, too, because Lakeland had some good field position yeah. there. And Moved Lakeland to, didn't run any clock, either. No, not at all. Garth Eastad is on to punt for Lakeland from the Viking 48-yard line. Good snap. Eastad gets away a dandy punt. And from the 14-yard line That's on so the teal. return... And that is Sutil on the return for the Riverside Vikings, and he takes the football to the 24-yard line. And that's where Riverside will take over with a 13-7 lead and three minutes and 57 seconds to play third quarter. You know, that possession, like I said, they, Lakeland really didn't run any clock. Well, Riverside ran the whole, you know, half of the yeah, third sure. quarter down. Yeah, time of possession in that third quarter. They Definitely. They do that again and put another score in. It's looking good for them. Sure is as the Riverside Vikings will break the huddle and operate from their own 24. First and 10 will give Nick Holmick an opportunity to uh, fire up his new technology, as we call him, and try to get some updates in high school football as Coleman will run the football. And Coleman with a nice run. I'll tell you, he's moving, he's moving about five for Lakeland players backwards with, with, his, with his strength. And he disappears along those uh, big defensive linemen. Coleman is only 5'10 and 190 pounds and uh, doing a good job running the football as he advances it to the 29-yard line. Second down and five. He's definitely the power back for Riverside, with Green probably being the, the, the speed. Quicker. Yep. Now the uh, Vikings with Ken Keeler running the offense, and Keeler on a delay will hand it off, and running game is shut down by the Lakeland defense. Nothing. Coleman in the backfield again, no gain at the play. Nick, any updates? Yeah, I got I got two right off the bat right here on a halftime score. Uh, Valley View 20, West Granton 6. Uh, another very good game uh, elsewhere. Team we'll see next week. Western Wayne has come back and taken a 14-12 lead against Holmesdale. Hey, that's oh, a that's barn a burner. That's a good one. Yeah. Up in the Maple City. A little, si a little side stat here. All four held Montrose to seven yards of offense in the first half. Wow. So. They're down to four for the Riverside Vikings from their own 30. Out of the eye formation, Keeler to throw, fires, and incomplete. incomplete. Good defensive was play by for Nick Satil. And some good defense by Lake. Garth Eastad made a great defensive uh, play on yep. that. Knock that away. You got a flag here. This is a dead ball foul. The ref threw it. I'm sure it's got to be something from the sideline. A warning. Why well, throw the flag? Is it a warning? It's or a is... warning. I, I don't know why they have to throw the flag. Just warn them. <laughs> yeah. You, it's just like warning both benches in baseball. The ref comes over to your bench, you say, all right, enough, that's your warning. You come over to Lakeland's bench, you tell them they've been warned, and you get on with the game. I like it. Keep it simple. John Tucker on to punt for the Vikings, and he will be punting into the wind, and this 
punt is caught at the 45 oh, yard line and East Stat has nowhere to go. A great play once again by the Riverside Phil Viking. Sotil. Phil Sotil. He's been having a great football game here tonight. Is that Phil Sotil or Nick Sotil? No, that, no, that was, was Phil. Phil. Phil is 19. Nick is 21. Tell you what, the Sotil family's got some athletes. Yes, they, they do. do. Yes, they do. And they're doing a good job here tonight. And boy, Phil Sotil on the defense. He's been playing some great defense here tonight for the Vikings. As Lakeland will go to work from its own 45-yard line, first down and 10, trailing 13 to 7 with 2.25 to play, third quarter. Furco with a run up the middle and is finally tackled at the midfield. Guys, that play has been good for at least five yards of carry tonight. Yep. Well, if it works, you, you keep running it until you, you keep running it until the opposition stops you, right? Yep. Take a page out of the old uh, Frank Pizzaglia playbook, uh, Joe D'Antona. How about Vince Lombardi? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If it works, keep going. Yeah, you keep running it until yeah. they stop it. Second and five from midfield for the Chiefs. And it's Jake Gross handing it off, and that's Lowry, Lowry, I believe, yeah, getting the ball. The game, Boy, Lakeland could come at you with some fresh running backs. They have Furco at fullback, Lowry, Babkinick, and they can also run Eastat. So Lakeland will keep the drive going by virtue of the first down and go to work from the Riverside 43 as we near one and a half minutes left to go. In the third quarter, Furco with the football. <laughs> and, uh, now, guess how many yards that's for? Another, another five. You can't, you know, it's a sure, th not a sure thing, but it's a, it's a good bet. Well, if they can't stop it, you keep running it. Luke Petinato will check in with the play from the near sideline and head coach Jeff Fusilchak. Second down and five, the line of scrimmage marked at the Viking 38-yard line. Gross will hand it off to the tailback, and this time it's Brother. Lowry with a first down for He's Lakeland. beating the pulling tackle to the hole. I think we have a player shaken up for Riverside. There's a player Tucker. down, John Tucker shaken up, and he will be attended to with 56 seconds to play in the third quarter. And Riverside leading by the score of 13 to seven here on Adams Cable High School Football. Here's great news from Figlamini Drugstore in Carbondale that can save you money and make shopping for your prescriptions more convenient. Figlamini now has an 895 generic drug plan and free local delivery. Figlamini offers diabetic shoes, lift chairs, and home health supplies. That's what sets Figlamini apart from the chains. Locally owned and trusted since 1929. Stop in and see the difference for yourself at Figlamini Drugstore in Carbondale, where your you're not just a number, your family. John Tucker was shaken up on the play. He has to definitely come out of the football game for at least one play. And Lakeland will face first down and 10 from the Viking 29 yard line and the clock running with 49 seconds to play third quarter and Lakeland trailing 13 to seven. And it's Furco with the football as he plows to the 20 yard line. All right, I'm wrong in that play. That was good for about eight. <laughs> And he, you know, the thing, he got that yardage, he bounced that. that. He was in the hole, he got his five, bounced it off for another three. It all starts at the line of scrimmage with the offensive line. And right now, Lakeland talks it over in the huddle. They've got some momentum trailing 13 to seven. Furco will dot the I formation. Lowry lines up at tailback. Lowry will take the no. handoff, and he's dropped. Good defensive effort by Donnie Clark of the Riverside Vikings making the tackle. And that will bring an end to the third quarter of play here at Lakeland Stadium with the Vikings leading the Chiefs 13 to seven on Adams Cable High School Football. Improve the appearance of your property with the help of Nick's Excavating and Paving of Carbondale. Nick's Excavating and Paving provides the highest quality service in residential and commercial excavating, paving and seal coating, demolition, land clearing, foundations, driveways, sidewalks and utility lines. Nick's Excavating and Paving Paving also delivers sand, stone, topsoil, and mulch. For prompt professional service, call Nick's Excavating and Paving Carbondale. 
Back to the gridiron for more Adams Cable High School football. Welcome back to Lakeland Stadium alongside Glenn Muskowski and Nick Homick. Steve Young here for week number nine of high school football. Fourth quarter about to get underway with Riverside leading Lakeland 13 to seven. The Chiefs have possession of the football after the time after the end of the quarter, facing third down and four from the Viking 23 yard line. I don't think there's any doubt that they, if they don't make it on this play, they're going to go for it. They need they need to keep that ball and get a score here. Well, here we go, Nick. This is what you live for. Week nine of high school football. A lot on the line for both teams and a great football game. It's been an awful long time in a huddle here. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. Especially coming out of the quarter break. Well, the Chiefs they, now will. They might go light to the line of scrimmage. They might have to. Yep. Well, they didn't start the 25 yeah. second clock, so they still have plenty of time, unless if the official is keeping it on the field. So they have to no, go to the line of scrimmage quickly. No. And here is the Lowry getting the call, and Nick Lowry heading for that first down. And I believe he might have it. Yep, picked up about close to seven yards on that play. When he's healthy, he's, he's a different runner, as many kids are, but. You can just see he's, he's that legs drive. Nick, when you're healthy, you're a, you're a heck you, of a runner you, too. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot how to run. I didn't run in, 20, in 35 years, so I wouldn't know what running is. You did all of your running, though, on uh, the this, basketball they, court, that, right? That was, that was a lot of suicides, right, Glenn? Yeah, a lot of suicides. Not for me. I didn't, I, I didn't do a suicide. <laughs> that, he was blowing a whistle. Right. Yeah, blowing a whistle is a tough job. Yeah, yes. but you ran suicides when you played, I did, right? I did. When we you ran played for fell, yep. right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's Lowry, I believe, or yes, getting the call, and Mike Lowry hammers to the 11-yard line for Lakeland. Now, guys, will that two-point conversion come back to haunt Riverside? I mean, we have plenty of time left in this football game, but if Lakeland should punch it in and get an extra point, now you've got a one-point ball game. You do. You know, those, uh, those, those extra points, how crucial they are in any football game. And a minute gone by here in quarter number four. Great to have you on board tonight for Adams Cable High School football. It's been a dandy. Second down and four from the Riverside 11 yard line. Oh, and look out. Oh, oh we got this away. is Jake Gross breaking a tackle and Gross fighting this. for yardage and gets inside the 10 and a flag. What are they going to call the flag? Christmas? Jake Gross looked as though he was caught behind the line of scrimmage and his knee did not touch and he kept fighting and fighting for yardage i'll tell you what that is making the most of your opportunities no. you well he came he he faked that handoff turned to the outside and he was hit what well but that play is is they're just faking that fullback yep. dive they've been running all night what, what did, i i missed that Bloater ad. against the uh, riverside uh, vikings okay so that's a pickup of, that's It'll a pickup. Yeah, yeah. It won't be much, but yeah, it's a first down. just inside the five yard line. Probably five yard penalty and uh, probably a uh, two yard pickup. Yeah. Well, folks, Lakeland right now in great shape with the football at the Riverside four, first down and goal. And the Chiefs will talk it over in the huddle. Zach Polito will be split on the top of your screen. Luke Pettinato is out there. And Gross will hand it off, and Furco is upended at the line of scrimmage for little or no gain on the play. Good defense by the Vikings. So as we near 10 minutes to play in the football game, this is a crucial possession for Lakeland because you don't know the way this game has been going, Nick, how many more opportunities you'll have. Yeah, the way it's been going, I think each team's going to possess it one more time. Now Tyler Bylotis checks in with the play from the near sideline on second down and goal from the three. It's Jake Gross running the Lakeland offense. Gross with a split backfield gives it to Furco, stacked up and nowhere to go as his forward progress will be marked just about at the line of scrimmage. Maybe they'll give him a yard and that's all. Well, you're in two down territory, no doubt. Mm -hmm. Field goal doesn't matter. 
So, big call here for head coach Jeff Wasilchak. Third down and goal from the two-yard line. I'd either run the jet pitch out here to give it to Lowry, or I'd run that fake, keep let the quarterback keep it one more time. Lakeland will talk it over in the huddle. Play clock at 15. Plenty of time. Up to the line of scrimmage they come. Gross with an eye formation in the backfield. Gross will take the snap. He will hand it off to the tailback. And no indication yet from the field. And I believe he stopped at the one yard line. So, yeah, no indication from the officials. Yep, so it's going I, to be fourth almost, and fourth. Almost identical what happened to Riverside down, it, down this other end. It's fourth down and goal from the one yard line it's for the even. Chiefs. It's probably, it's probably six inches. <laughs> the stripe of the football. That's close. That's how I'm telling you. That. Well, here we go, folks. Fourth down and a yard. Fourth down and goal. Keeper from the one. Yep. Gross will hand it off to Lowry, and Lowry I don't, breaks either. the plane of the goal line for a touchdown. The official on the far yeah, side boy. called it. And we're deadlocked at 13, Riverside and Lakeland. It wasn't easy, and he but didn't get it by It was much. second effort. It was just, the second effort that got it. Just enough to break the plane of the goal line. And now, this is a big extra point by Lakeland. Colin Cooper is on for the extra point out of the hold of Nico Pirano. This extra point is big. With eight minutes and 13 seconds remaining in the football game. Low snap, the kick. Here it comes. It's good, and Lakeland has a 14-13 lead over Riverside here on Adams Cable High School Football. The Gabriel family and the staff at Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Home and Cremation Services Incorporated of Carbondale send best wishes to our local athletes and teams for a successful season. In your time of need, call 282-1219 for the ultimate in professional service from Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Home and Cremation Services Incorporated, 74 North Main Street and 2 Hospital Street, Carbondale. We're back at Lakeland Stadium where the Chiefs have taken the lead 14-13 over Riverside with eight minutes and 13 seconds to play fourth quarter. Well, Nick, they, they were able to uh, grind it out and just break the plane of the goal line for the touchdown by Lowry. That, was that extra a, point was big. That was good second effort by Lowry to get in there because he was he was stacked up a little bit and just kept his legs moving and just got in. And now it will be Lakeland to tee it up and kick off to the Riverside Vikings. Two are deep. And here's the kick by Cooper. And into the wind, and he got Pretty it up there, and then it the did. Oh, that's a live no. ball. And that is a live ball, and Sanson picks it up and slips, loses his footing, and he's decked at the six-yard wow. line. Mental mistake there. Yeah. That's a big mistake. The two deep men just watched each other, and no one went for the ball. Yeah. But credit Colin Cooper for putting a heck of a leg <laughs> into the wind. Yeah, kicking into the wind. You know, that if he was going with the wind, Nick, that would have been into the end zone, but you could see as that football went up how it started to die and it fell, to, fell in front of the two uh, receivers and uh, they just let it roll. So fortunately for uh, Riverside's, Kashad Stanton picked it up, but now the Vikings with eight minutes and 10 seconds will operate first down and 10 from their own six yard line. But now Riverside's got the win, so. Now you might see time. the passing game. And Keeler. Will go off the play fake. Keeler to throw. He's got Coleman at the 11 on the reception. Babkinick on the tackle for Lakeland. Well, you might see uh, Keeler put the ball in the air with the wind at his back here in the fourth quarter. Clock the big factor. Lakeland leading by one, 14-13. Real dogfight here at Lakeland Stadium in week number nine. Here come the Riverside Vikings. It will be Nick Satil wide on the top of your screen. 
and Keeler to take a look at the Lakeland defense. Coleman will dot the I formation and uh, Green will take the handoff and Green will have a Riverside first down as he's tackled at the 19 yard line. Yeah, that was a good run by Green. He's he, he's been uh, very quiet in this half. Well, the kind of football game we expected. It's been a dandy thus far between the Vikings and the Chiefs. This is where Lakeland really needs a big defensive stand. Nope. It's this is this is you know, maybe my this might be one of these uh, who gets the ball last. Huh? First down, Riverside from its own 19-yard line. And the pass, a swing pass on the far side. Satil, did he lose the football? No. No, he kept the football. But he, what, he, will, dragged, uh, he dragged two guys with him for about five yards. So Nick Satil on the receiving end for the Riverside Vikings and a pretty good pickup to about the 24-yard line for a five-yard game. Well, right here, the Riverside Vikings with their opportunity. Plenty of time on the clock as we near six minutes remaining fourth quarter. They trail 14-13, looking at second down and five from their own 24. And Keeler will hand it off to the tailback. Caught at the line of scrimmage for no gain on the play. And that was, that was Green, he had, again, Antonio no Sermonero on the tackle for Lakeland. And that will result in third down for the Riverside Vikings. Now this is this could be a big play. They don't get a first down here. A decision whether you go for it down there or you have to punt it away, you know. Be interesting. This is a crucial third down play for the Viking offense. Third down and seven from their own 22. And out of the I formation, Keeler to throw. He's got Satil for the first down. Boy, no, no, incomplete. He dropped it. Incomplete. Boy, it looked as though Satil had the football, but he he did not have possession long enough. No, nope. incomplete. Boy, it looks like it would look. I thought he had it. That is going to bring the only, up fourth down. The only thing I could see on that, I couldn't see on that, was whether whether he bobbled it on the way down. And on fourth down and seven. That was a perfectly thrown pass. On fourth and seven, the punting unit will come on for the Riverside Vikings. John Tucker is on for Riverside, and he will punt from his own 13-yard line. Gets away a good snap, and he's going to run. And Tucker turns it upfield, and oh, Lakeland's all over it at the 26-yard line. I'll tell you, I... <laughs> Wow. Coach John Fox I love has you. got <laughs> some guts. <laughs> I'll say that. Unfortunately, it doesn't work on two attempts. It didn't with the work. The outside kick and the, the fake pump, but my goodness. If it, But if it did, imagine the momentum Riverside would have had. And right now, with Lakeland up 14-13, they'll have excellent field position at the 27-yard uh, line of Riverside. Got to have a lot of guts to do that. <laughs> Wow, that is You're something. right, Nick. You wow, have to have is. a lot of guts to do that. Got to have a lot of confidence yep. in your team. Yeah, well, yes, yeah, sure. And now it's Furco with the football, breaking tackles, and he knifes his way inside the 20 to the 19-yard line of Riverside. Well, we talked about that two-point conversion earlier in the ball game, how it could come back to haunt you. And right now, the Vikings trail by one, 14 to 13. And Lakeland will be in no hurry to get out of this huddle. And they're gonna take that play clock right down as it uh, is down to 12 seconds right now before they even break the huddle. And up to the line of scrimmage they come. And it will be Jake Gross to run the offense. And Gross, or a Roop will hand it off. And Lowry with the football to the 10 yard line. Well, the football will be marked just outside the 10 yard line. And 431 on the clock and now it will begin to run with Lakeland leading by one. And 
Tyler Bylotis checks in with the play from the near sideline on first down and 10. Lakeland can pick up a first down at the one yard line. And it's Cody Roop running the offense now for Lakeland and he will spin and hand it off and Lakeland will keep it on the ground. Nothing fancy right here. And Eric Furco, the six foot, 228 pound junior getting the call for the Chiefs. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Furco's been a workhorse this half. Well, Nick, clock management right now. That's going to be huge for Lakeland with a one point lead. I'm going to well, want to take that play clock right down. Well, you still have three timeouts if you're Riverside. Even if Lakeland punches one in here, they're going to probably go for the one. Mm -hmm. It's still a one, point, a one possession game. From the eight yard line, second down and seven. And this time the running game goes to Mike Lowry and he squirts inside the five to the three yard line. So Lakeland can come at you right now so many different ways with Furco, Lowry, Babkinick. But it's been the power running of uh, Furco and Lowry thus far in the ball game. And with under three minutes to play, 2.58 and counting, Lakeland clinging to a 14-13 lead, second down and third down. Uh, third third down. down and two from the three yard line. They could pick up a first down at the one or score a touchdown. Split backfield, and handoff will go to the tailback, and uh, this play there. goes now, nowhere. Now, if you're Lakeland, do you kick a field goal? Well, on fourth down. Something to think about. I run it all the way down to nothing, take a timeout, and think about it some more. Now you've got to take that play clock down as it's, uh, the game clock is down to 219, as Lakeland will talk it over, and... Uh, I don't think they're going to think about a field goal, guys. And they, they're going to, this, this well, they just started the 20, the 25 second. Clock. Wow, I'm surprised about that. That, that. that started awfully late, didn't it? Well, the second they, you know, they well, got that official's whistle didn't blow till late. You know, here comes Lakeland on fourth down and two from the three yard line. Roop will go on a long count. And he will hand it off to Lowry, and Lowry lowers his so. shoulder, and I don't know if don't he got it. I think he did. He looks as though he was short he picked by up maybe about, one. Maybe short by about a yard. As the officials will sort things out. So we're going to, uh, with 142 to play, will they measure? Nope. nope. Riverside takes over. Riverside is... Lakeland turns it over on downs to Riverside with one minute and 42 seconds to play in the fourth quarter. Now, your Riverside, how's your field goal team? Hey, that's another question. You, you know, have the wind at your you back the wind, also. You get down around the 25, 20, 20, 25 yard line. Yep, here we go. It's going to be interesting. First down and 10, the Vikings from their own two yard line trailing 14-13 with 142 to play in the fourth quarter. Keeler back to throw, looking and overthrows Nick Satil on the far side of the field. That will stop the clock with a buck 37. Now, the thing of it is, Lakeland safeties are playing pretty shallow for my liking. Well, you know. Especially at this phase of the game. Do we, do we, do we get into this uh, Bend, uh, don't break type defense. Uh, to keep everything in the, in front of you would be the ticket. Well, you got to keep everything in front of you. Yeah, because, of course. Yeah. You know, the, some kind of miracle catch. I mean, you just want to you just want to tackle it. Yeah. Second down and ten. The Vikings from their own two yard line with 137 to play in the football game, trailing by one. Keeler rolling out in his own end zone. The rush is on, puts it up for grabs. It's, and and it's beautiful. Easter, Easter, what a, Easter what a great defensive off. play. It seemed, it seemed to me, Nick, that the, the Riverside receiver stood there and Eastad stepped in front of him. Yeah, he tipped it to himself, it looked like, and he just made a great play on the ball. And Eastad, Garth Eastad comes up with the key interception for Lakeland. And with a minute to, and 30 seconds to play, Lakeland will bring its offense onto the field, leading by one, 14 to 13. The ball is on the Viking 19-yard yep. line. Lakeland's got to still run offense here because yes, they can't they do. just take three knees. They no. have three timeouts. Yep. Got to run some. Got to run a few plays right here. 
one first down and, and it's over. And protect the football. And Lowry goes inside the 19 yard line to the 18. And the Vikings uh, with some timeouts. So with a 125 to play, Riverside calls a timeout as they trail 14 13 on Adams Cable High School Football. When your car does this. Call us first. Every job is perfect or it doesn't leave the shop. That's the motto at Beston's Auto Body and Collision Center in Carbondale. In an accident, remember, it is your car and your choice to choose your repair center. Call Beston's Auto Body and Collision Center in Carbondale, well known for integrity, safety, and craftsmanship. For more information concerning your rights and the 10 things you need to know before having your car repaired, go to their website, bestonsautobody.com. Good luck to all area teams. From Tony, Mike, Jeff, and the staff at Bestons Auto Body and Collision Center, Gordon Avenue, Carbondale. Welcome back to Lakeland Stadium with Glenn Muskowski and Nick Homick. St uh, Steve Young here with 125 remaining in the fourth quarter. And Lakeland leading 14 to 13. They will face second down and 10 yards to go as Babkinick takes the handoff and is caught for a loss on the play at the 20 yard line. And the Riverside Vikings will wow. take another timeout. His knee, did his knee hit the ground? I, I, <laughs> I don't think sure it did. It did. <laughs> At least in the officials' eyes. And that's probably the worst thing I had to say about the officials tonight. They, they did a wonderful job of keeping this game moving. Wow! I, I know, that's high praise for me. <laughs> yeah, they really did. They really did, and they kept it in order. I mean, you know, they didn't take anything from anyone. It was, uh, it was a good that's job. You, you, you know... You know how you evaluate officials when you don't when you don't, don't really, know that when they're, you, there. they're there right. they do a good job. Right. They did a, they did a real good job because this was a, and you take care of business when it has to be taken care of. Well, there was there were some major major penalties on on uh, on uh, uh, personal foul one on Lakeland, couple on on Riverside. 119 remaining in the football game. Lakeland leading by one, 14 to 13. Third down and 11 for the Chiefs from the Riverside 20 yard line. I think only 11 seconds went off the clock in two, two plays. plays. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Riverside Vikings using their timeouts to uh, stop the clock. Now the Chiefs will come up to the line of scrimmage. And it's Jake Gross in at quarterback for the Lakeland Chiefs. And uh, did we have some, you know, let's, let's, I think the official wants some time on the time clock. On the clock really? That will give Nick an opportunity maybe to uh, fire up the new technology. Nope, uh, no, nope. not going to happen. This time. <laughs> not this time. As Jake Gross will get set to run the offense with an eye formation in the backfield. And Gross wants to throw, looking end zone, and it's incomplete. If pass was intended for Zach Polito. You had to take a shot, and that's the time to do it. To do right. it. And if you don't have it, throw it away like you did. Now it is fourth do down it. and 11 for Lakeland. I'd throw it again. The only drawback, well, you kind of have to. Well, yeah. I don't know if I would. The only drawback to throwing it is to save every side of timeout. Yeah, definitely. Now the clock doesn't well, move. It'll, it, it, One sixteen it, it, remaining. Yeah, it. it well, it, it. So Luke Petinato is wide on the top of your screen, and it is Jake Gross. Gross is sacked and Fumble. did he lose the football? Yes. Riverside will take over anyway. It's off or not, but yeah, yeah. they will take over because it was fourth down. But a minute and ten seconds remain, so the drama will continue to unfold here at Lakeland Stadium, with the Chiefs clinging to a 14-13 lead, and Riverside will take over possession of the football. First down and ten at their own 27. With the wind at their back and the way uh, the quarterback can throw the ball, Keeler can throw the ball for Riverside. This is they have they have some time here. You know it's. It's awfully ironic that Lakeland, you know, with the running attack that they have and the power running that they use, that they were unable to pick up a first down in that situation. 
So now it is Riverside with Keeler working out of the gun. The rush is on. He eludes a would-be tackler. Fires downfield. Pass is complete at the 45-yard line. And it goes to Matthew Fallon once again. Fantastic catch. Underneath the coverage for a first down. Minute and four seconds remain. The game hanging in the balance for both Riverside and Lakeland. Lake, Lakeland needs some pressure. Yes, they do. They need a turnover right here. From the 46-yard line, first down and 10, the Vikings, and Keeler will spike it to stop the clock. Well, it's coming right down to the wire, guys. Week number nine of high school football playoffs. Playoff implications on the line here tonight between Lakeland and Riverside. You thought that uh, interception by Eastat sealed the football game, but uh, it was not to be as Lakeland could not pick up a first down to put Riverside away. Well, and right now on second down and 10 from the Viking 46 with one minute left, Ken Keeler will work out of the gun. Keeler to throw, plenty of time, looks downfield. He's got a man open, Whoa. overthrows his intended receiver. Kashad Stanton. Lakeland's got to be very careful with their, you know, they're in man, they're in man coverage of two free safeties. So their they're defensive backs running with their guys. That was very close to a hold. Wow. Well, yeah, well, it was, and, it, and, and he almost bumped them also. Well, he was yeah. holding the crap out of him and bumping him, I mean, but, and, well. and the safety undercut the football, which <laughs> could have been double disaster. Third down and 10 yards to go. The Vikings trailing 14-13 with 55 seconds on the clock here in the fourth quarter. Here come the Vikings to the line of scrimmage. Keeler out of the gun once again. Keeler will take the snap, back to throw, steps up in the pocket, looking long. It's up for grabs, and the pass it's is caught. caught. It's caught at the 13-yard line by the wow. Riverside Vikings. I don't know who's caught. And on the receiving end for Riverside, it was John Tucker. The clock has stopped until they set the ball, so. 46 seconds remain in the football game, and the Vikings have the football. Inside the 15-yard line, and wow. Keeler will spike it to stop the clock. How about that? What a, what a finish. Wow. It, this is wild. Just like we drew it up on a schedule. Yeah, well, Nick. <laughs> I got to say it every time. Nick, you hit a home run with this one. Uh, I, I did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the football is spotted at the Lakeland 14-yard line. Second down and 10 yards to go for Riverside, trailing 14-13 with 44 seconds left in the football game. Here we go. Keeler out of the shotgun. Here comes the snap. Keeler to throw, looking plenty of time, going end zone, overthrows his intended receiver, Tucker, in the left corner. That's a smart throw by Keeler. He didn't have anybody open, throw it out of the back of the end zone. Now well, that's senior leadership. He's five, six foot, 160 pounds, and a senior. And the incompletion will stop the clock with 38.5 seconds remaining. Well, he's the tallest six footer I've ever seen. <laughs> he's a gopher feeder. As Riverside will talk it over with their head coach, John Fox, in his second year. You know, Riverside knocked off Lakeland last year, 7-6. to six. Lakeland clinging to a one-point lead right here as Keeler will await the snap. Keeler drops back in the pocket to throw, looks end zone, and oh. it's incomplete. And two Lakeland defenders had a shot at the well. intercepting the football. Lowry was back there. Miscommunication on there somewhere. There's, that wasn't a receiver in that area. Here's the football game, folks. Fourth down for Riverside. Fourth and 10 from the Lakeland 14-yard line with 34 seconds left. The Lakeland call it. And uh, the Chiefs, the Riverside the bag. And Riverside, the Chiefs yeah. are clinging to a one-point lead, 14-13. It doesn't get any better than this, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Not. This is a dandy. Wow, how about this? This has been a great football game. I mean, and no one has left this stadium. If anything, I think more people have come here. 
I wonder if Coach Gabriel's still cozy in bed. Yeah, uh, he's probably on his second cup of co cocoa. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'll await the text. He should be sending I, I, one in I'm any sure, moment. I'm sure the teacher that he is, he's probably great at grading papers. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Glenn. <laughs> so the Friday Vikings, night, he must be grading papers. The Chiefs and the Vikings talk it over in the huddle. Here it is. This is the football game right here. Fourth down and 10, Riverside from the Lakeland 14-yard line. And it's Ken Keeler, the senior quarterback, out of the shotgun for Riverside. Keeler back in the pocket, looks, end zone, the pass is incomplete, knocked away by Lakeland. And the well, Chiefs will take him. over with 29 seconds left. I he think had he was him. open. Yeah, he was open. And who, who was it? Was, it, was, was that a Tucker? No. No, five. it was Fallon again going Fallon. across the middle. Same, Fallon was same open. Play. He just, it, 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 the Lakeland, uh, he just maybe threw a little bit behind him, or uh, it's hard to tell. I, you know, I'm not going to guess on who, you know, if he hit him in stride or whatnot, but he had him open. Well, for Lakeland, their defense rises to the occasion, and they dodge a bullet late here in the fourth quarter, and with 29 seconds left and a one-point lead, Lakeland will come up to the line of scrimmage, and they'll take a knee. See it. Be good. They'll come up. They'll take a knee. The clock will begin to run, what, and that will do it. It's amazing. What goes around comes around. Riverside seven six last year. Lakeland 14 13 this year and you couldn't you couldn't ask for a better game than this and what did it all come down to the missed, missed extra e point the missed extra point right how important that is and Lakeland will secure a spot in the district 2 double a playoffs with a dramatic 14 to 13 win over the Riverside Vikings. Congratulations to Jeff Wasilchak and the Lakeland Chiefs as they improve their overall record to six wins and three losses. They are now three and one in division two of the Lackawanna Football Conference. And for the Vikings of head coach John Fox, they fall to five and four overall and three wins and one loss in division two. Now next week, the Vikings will be on the road as they will take on the Dunmore Bucks while the Lakeland Chiefs will be at Western Wayne and we will have that game for you right here at 645 next Friday night here on Adams Cable High School Football. Nick, some final thoughts. Uh, just a well-played ball game all the way around. Uh, you know, I can't say enough about both teams. Really, Lakeland obviously gets the big win that they need for the playoff implications. Riverside has nothing to really hang their heads about. I, they played as well as they possibly could. Came right down to the end. Well, they really gave the fans here at Lakeland Stadium tonight a great football game. And it was a dramatic finish for the Lakeland Chiefs as the defense rolls to the occasion well, and they hang on for the 14 to 13 win, Glenn. Well, I'll tell you what, I I, I, I have to say, go with what Nick said. It was a very, very well played game. Uh, uh, yeah, but it came down to uh, uh, Riverside's uh, inability to get that extra point and when they went one for two so uh, you know and you said it Steve they may come back to haunt them and it certainly did it but they made a effort to get down that field they 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 did not quit they uh, I would say uh, coach Fox has got to give his kids a lot of credit for for making a comeback like they did to try to get that ball on the field and they did have him open it was just one of those things it was just tip. And I would like to say this is what this is what a, what a great game to finish this for me for, for you, you. Yeah, for <laughs> you. Just the yeah. broadcasting. Well, we'll miss you next week, Glenn. Well, well, but uh, we look forward to the round ball. Oh yeah, that's coming. That's great. I, yeah, I next can't time go. you'll be on the air with us, yeah. we'll be at a tournament. Yeah, the Toronto's we'll tournament. To Toronto's tournament, which is uh, as we all know, it's in it's in Carbondale anymore. So, uh, and it's 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 pro it's uh, it was good because last year when we had it in Carbondale, we we had plenty of room and plenty of seating and more than enough parking. Well, Glenn, have a great trip next week, and Dave Sarah will be in the booth for uh, next week's broadcast between the Lakeland Chiefs and the Western Wayne Wildcats. So it's all over here at Lakeland Stadium. The Lakeland Chiefs hang on for a dramatic 14-13 win over the Riverside Vikings. And good night, Mr. Coach Gabriel. Good night. Yes. <laughs> good luck. <laughs>
Good, Good luck, luck tomorrow. Good luck at Susquehanna. Yeah. So for Glenn Muskowski and Nick Homick, I'm Steve Young. Till next time, so long from Lakeland Stadium. This Adams Cable Sports presentation of high school football between Riverside and Lakeland was brought to you by Adams Cable Service, NJS Systems and Controls, Route 6 Mayfield, Bestin's Body Shop and Collision Center, Tom's Floor Shop, Main Street Childs, Main Street Sunoco, Fire Napa Auto Parts Store, Tonkin Auto Supply, White's Crossing Sports Shop, Figlomini Drugstore, Carbondale, locally owned and trusted since 1929. Nick's Excavating and Paving. Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Home and Cremation Services Incorporated, with locations at 74 North Main Street and 2 Hospital Street. The starting lineups for today's game are presented by Roselle Department Store, Carbondale. Join us again Friday, November 6th, when Channel 7 Sports presents the regular season finale as the Lakeland Chiefs take on the Western Wayne Wildcats here on Adams Cable High School Football.